Puss, puss, puss. Puss, puss, puss. You want a hungry happy kitty, aren't you? Puss, puss, puss. Puss, puss, puss. You little cat. You always want to eat, don't you? G'day, viewers. So I've got this thing all fixed up now. The dial works sweet. Finally, I uh, got through the nightmare of uh, properly restringing the dial. That all works. Beautiful. I also picked up some nice bargains too. And something I've been wanting for ages. I got a uh, some um, a bit shorter coax cable, so I got some more of those. These older Japanese ones tend to be very good. Better than modern Chinese ones you buy at the supermarket. They tend to be uh, um, uh, bad signal problems with them. I was also short on some uh, male or female type, so I got another one of those. And a B and C type. Better work in my vintage VCR. And a linear wall watt with multiple voltage taps between 3 volt and 12 volt at 300 milliamp. And everything in between. All those voltages I can switch between. And the good thing is it's linear, not those noisy cheap switch mode ones you buy. I think the Dick Smith uh, wall watt um, sockets will fit that connector too. Beautiful. 885, I think that's the, could be the year, and looks around mid 80s. I'll definitely come useful. I also found one of these, a horseman time switch. For 20 bucks, a bargain. Didn't belong to any property uh, of any, wasn't um, anybody electricity ward, there's no uh, markings on it. It all uh, seems to be in pretty good nick. So I'm carefully pull this thing out. It's a tool end job, this one. There it is. It paints the UK, Australia, and the USA. The fuse is intact. There you go, my first horseman time switch. It's got a little late changer in there, too. Type YMK 2OS. 30 amps, resistive load, 20 amps, tungsten and lamp load, and 2 horsepower. 50 cycles, 250 volts. Maker's number, L86562. Manufactured by the Horseman Gear Company Limited, Bath, England. Look at that. All original. Something three turns is a winding under there. I think you can actually manually wind this now up as well. Behind the um, you need that face that dial off, and there's a little screw you can wind. But this is actually a self winding one. Got the self winding spring reserve. It's all in good nick. Winding dial gear is intact. No cracks, nothing. It's all in pretty good nick. Absolute bargain for 20 bucks. Even the rubber's all in good nick, that seal. And and the uh, best score of them all was this. A Chrysler black and white TV. Model P17. Now the um the only yacht they had this actually was actually um being tested. They actually tested it and plugged it in and it worked, but I had the um very careful whack the power button in case something happened. I got a good raster, very good brightness, a full picture. No um, corona from any damaged HT or perished H high tension leads, so it was working quite well. So it wasn't on for very long there. So pull on, push off. Contrast and brilliance, they all worked. They were very strong, the adjustments here. There's a bit of a crack there. VHF family, obviously. Five A where I modulate my uh, set the box to the uh, drums a bit loose there. I can fix that. That's your tuning. The antenna's on a good nick. It's just a bit dirty, so metal cabinet. I'm not even the mark on the screen either. Yeah, you gotta love those little imperfections on the phosphors though. 
I did work experience out of a pair shop once, and the um the owner had lots of uh, black and white TVs, and some of them I've seen these little uh, dots on the phosphors with the imperfections when they were made. Missing one screw, but that's not a worry. From what I can see, it's never ever been apart. It's all circuit board in there. There's it's got Phillips. Uh, what do you call it? Mullard Phillips um, master capacitors, I think they are. They're not paper wax, but they're sealed. Super sealed top. These are the ones that never go bad. So they say, but from what I could tell, for that small test, it was working flawlessly. So I'm going to be doing some careful checks. Clean up this messy chassis because uh, a dusty uh, valve, anything that operates on valves and it's full of dust and gunk is a fire hazard. So this is going to get it, definitely going to get a good clean. 17 valve. It's got the original cord. 7.5 amp Acmark cord. Vertical hold and your hold on a hold adjustment. There's a the bottom there. I'll take this uh, back off. We can have a good look inside it. Here's the inside of this TV. You see a lot of dust. I gotta clean this. Cinch Car Australia Old Electrolytics Originals Look at that nice power transformer, look at the look at the um, core on that. It reminds me of an X, XRT. Has a date there, August 1969. There you go. 1969 this uh, TV was made. All right, let's get this uh, cage off. Here's where the flyback is. That's supposed to go on there. Doesn't look like it's ever, ever, ever been touched though inside. It's probably just been opened up and cleaned. Oh, P117, there we go. P117, the model number. Let's get this high voltage cage off, have a look at this old flyback. There's a damper tube uh, valve in there. Look at that flyback. Let's get this high voltage cage off, make sure the uh, everything's in good nick in there. A lot of cleaning to do though. Okay viewers, this one's mainly for Anthony, high one voltage one rules. Look at that old flyback. Secondary. Let's go on to the uh, Holes a little output valve there. And there's a primary in there. It's almost as big as a bloody secondary. Goes in there, and that's a chipler. But that's the chipler's there. They, oh, no, 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 hang on. So that would be a high voltage rectifier. Then goes to the chipler. This one is your horizontal output, and one of these is your damper uh, damper valves. Trigon brand, 6AL3, AL36, 6C. M5. I get to get the schematic for this so I can uh, be uh, checking over all the valves. Pretty dirty. When you get this thing apart, you got to pull these screws off and the front comes apart and the uh, casing just slides off. It seems to be a hybrid. We've got a chassis and a circuit board here. Is those capacitors there. It's nice as uh, when they used to make TVs in Australia. They sure, sure as hell don't make like this anymore. Got this uh, Type NT3016 decal for the tuner. I've got to glue that back on. I'm going to leave that on there. Clean up this valve. Get all the dust out. The more dust I get out of this TV, the better. The way I'll run cooler. The yoke. Nice big chunky yoke. Nice vintage electron gun. <laughs> I'll uh, clean this thing down and we can put a signal into it and see how we uh, see what sort of picture we can get with the signal. There you go, um, 
get my air compressor charged up and we can uh, start giving this thing a bit of a clean. Definitely untouched, so everything's definitely original on this TV. What a dust, original dust in there. Got my air compressor charging up. And uh, this stand's actually removable. You yeah, under this um, long bolt here, and that unbolts the chassis. And you know, the front of the TV chassis just unhooks them under here, and you can lift it off and have it as a tabletop set. That's real cool. Got a contact clean all those buttons too, so I get all the case off, give it a good clean, contact clean all those buttons. Hundred microfarad, two hundred volt capacitor. 16 microfarad, 300 volts there. They're all um, common values. The big one's probably a 33 microfarad down there. I'll give them a check of my ESR meter. Get the door apart and clean it. Give them an ESR meter check, because even though that thing did work quite well, no harm bars, nothing, it performed quite well when they tested it in the shop. So I'll give everything a good clean. Check the capacitor of the ESR meter. I will need replacing um, eventually. There you go, it's a hybrid uh, circuit board and chassis wide, point to point wide. Bit of damage there, that's just the plastic veneer coming off. Oh, and I'll uh, keep getting this case off. Okay, viewers, man, this thing's filthy. This TV's definitely been in the Majora district, Sarasia district, all its life. That's typical red lamb dust to get around Majora. Desert. It's definitely a local TV, this one. So without dirt, we'll just trap heat, which is not good. Phillips valve there, mini watt valve over there. All right, let's uh, continue taking this thing apart. And this bloody um, tuning knob of red lime dust caked in it, just caked. So this thing's probably never ever been apart, which is a good sign. Okay, viewers, this is already broken off, so I can easily repair that, re glue that back there. Little speaker there, which connects up over here. And the CRT bracket goes on here, modeled to the outside uh, shield casing there. That's the implosion band. So it's quite safe to work on this one, like a modern CRT, but still be careful. I can align this so it lines up properly, so I'm going to get some contact cleaner and clean up all these controls. Because this uh, type of dust gets in everything. Red lame. But everything looks untouched. All original. So get everything a good shot of contact cleaner. Especially the tuner, because the, um, these types of turret tuners are notorious for having bad contacts. When they get bad contacts, you probably either won't pick up anything at all, or you have a um, uh, bad signal or bad pitch, like snowing and all that. So we'll find the contacts and just give that a good clean out. Then we can start on the cosmetic side of it. Then we'll, uh, we'll get all the valves nice and cleaned. Then we can um, power it up, put a signal into it, see what sort of how good the picture is. Okay, viewers, the valves are all nice and clean. Got a Xerox valve there. Mini watt. Another couple of mini watts, 6x9. Another 6x9 mini watt. A 6 g 9 mini watt Phillips. A Phillips 6G, 6G98. Yeah, I'll be careful because I smeared half the bloody markings off them. That one there is a an audio output, I think, but I smeared a bloody marking off that one here as well, so I stopped cleaning them. A Trigon brand. Uh, 6GV8, I think. That was a 6CM, 6CM5. That's an 880 high voltage rectifier valve. Looks like a vacuum capacitor. Bit hard to get that one out, I'm not gonna yank it out, just leave it there as it is. That's a problem with these uh, types of white markings here. They smudge off as easy as a bloody dust does. Got the uh, CRT clean there so I can see the electron guns. These ones here will probably be like IF and similar to radio valves in there. Now to get to these capacitors on the bottom there, that's got to come off. I can uh, 
probably won't worry about it actually. They work pretty good. These so uh, I'll probably be um okay. But we'll um rack it back together and uh give it a test. Hmm, <sighs> definitely when the last of the Australian made speakers, see what I decided to cheap out. Couldn't even find a proper dust cap, so to just use ordinary paper. And just stuck it over the top. Hmm. This is an Australia um 1969, I think that was one of the one of the last years Australia ma uh, stopped making TVs. Pretty much to the 70s onwards, all Japanese rebrands. Was a bit of dust in there, but that cleaned it all up. I brought that back in and uh, let's continue working this back together. Now if you all saw back together, let's turn it on. Filaments and the CRT are warmed up. Slowly, slowly. Yep. Might have a bad connection somewhere. Yeah, Katrina. Bad connection to Katrina there. Might have been my VHF module over closer. It's too far out of range. Yeah. Dirty connections to Katrina. Unfortunately, I'm out of contact cleaner. I didn't get enough in there. Bit of rattling around in there. Gotta check if the windings and the transformers are all up. We just gotta tighten down. No UHF on these, just VHF. Got radio. Yeah, dirty connection to the tuner. Get my modulator, it's too far, um, too far out of range. Yeah. Brilliant, says brightness. Gee, it's good. Contrast. Has plenty of that. I swear I see some bloody colouring in there. Which is making a lot of right noises. Yeah. My VHF modulator is too far out of range. Alright. Yeah. Great. Dirty connection to that tuner. Alright. I go and get me a uh, VHF modulator and plug it in directly into it. We tune it in and see how good the picture is. Okay, HD set-top box, VHF modulator. Hope this antenna setup works for the set-top box. I may not pick up much. Oh, hang on. Now, work. 
got a ton of power on. CRT for them, it's there. I love how this old TV is warm up. Yeah, dirty connections. Much of that is definitely working. Just got it dirty in there. I'm not getting much of a connection to a good signal. Turn this thing in when I get a result. I'll, uh, go. Hey, I got it working. Bit of wear on there though. A little bit of wear on this one. Focus is good. The brightness and everything is good. Channel 4, not channel 5, eh? This dial's wrong. That's why I wasn't getting anything. It's appropriate for this TV. I oh, love black and white film. behind there. I was on a holds plane up there. There we go. Yeah, you gotta adjust the holes onto a hold. Nice and loud. Of course, my antenna set up in this place is absolutely garbage, but that's DTV for you. $2,060 on the Look at that, eh? Up to find out more, I caught up with Craig Stevens from H. Stevens. Right. See you right behind the eye. Can't really show you too much of the individual copyright, but there's nothing much on TV these days. A bit of wear there. Everything else seems to work all right, though. Not even pick up radio channels. Bloody DTV, you gotta love it. Nothing, no reception. Uh, to Anna Bly, uh, wishing oh, Channel 7 seems to be okay. The best. Obviously, uh, I'll test my reception here. Fights, uh, in the past. My homemade TV well, antenna with crappy wire. It's not doing too now. bad there. Uh, she embarks on this treatment. The camera seems to make it look less focused, what it actually is in real life. Thank you very much, Patrick Condonair, reporting from Brisbane. Of course, we do wish Anna Bly all the best with her treatments. Kevin Rudd has made a high profile visit to the Victorian city of Geelong. Yeah, I was on a hold there. A key role in Labor's re election, but not the leadership itself. Political reporter, me, Greaves, joins me now. Good afternoon. Can we believe him? Did we? Right, as well. Repeatedly today, whether we should read more into this 24-hour media blitz, especially after early week, that they should pull their heads. Doesn't say a picture; it just says brilliance. Why they're burning there? Got to say they can spread his volume control. It's getting a bit stiff. In their marginal seats, his visit overshadowed Julia Gillard's meeting with from the car industry in Melbourne this afternoon. Let's there you go. Huh? Not too bad at all. Works quite well. And reaction from his party and. Got to have a VHF modulator though. These are not have UHF, just VHF only. These. There we go, Duplex 17. So that is the case of the. So you listen for rattling. I can hear now. 
just hum from the um, transformer with a little bit of uh, noise from the um, yoke, but it's not actually rattling and winding, it's just you can hear the um, power going through it. Most old TVs had some old really noisy yokes back then, or the friction coils. Have a good look, get up here and have a good look. Ah, oh, that smell. <sighs> that aroma, I love it. But clearly National Senator Barnaby Joyce wasn't listening. What if I was glowing in there? Of course, the reality is that the coalition are going to win the election. Is that true? Has Tony Abbott written his election victory speech? No. Look, can I tell you the interesting thing here? Uh, he said he had a... The interesting thing here is... It's not my word. Uh, he said it. That's arrogance. That's absolute arrogance. Okay, viewers, that'll be enough for now. Fight this election. Thanks for watching.